So the New Testament authors sometimes misquote the Old Testament. Like, how would your pastor answer that? When it comes to misquotations, there are several. Here's uh, Hebrews is misquoting Psalms. Mark actually misquotes Isaiah. He throws in a prophecy from Malachi in there. So the author of Matthew correctly corrects uh, the author of Mark. Romans misquotes De Deuteronomy. And again, it doesn't take much thought to figure out why the author of Romans, Paul, uh, did this. Here's another misquotation. Hebrews misquotes Jeremiah. And this is like major difference. One says, though I was a husband to them. The other one says, I disregard them. It's almost opposite. Thus, the early Christian belief that these books were scripture would not have stopped all changes, but would have actually led to some changes as Christians tried to fix what they deemed to be mistakes in the text. There's contemporary evidence for the life and ministry of Jesus. The fact is, we have no contemporary evidence for Jesus or his ministry. The Gospels report events that we would expect to be recorded by others. Now, you would think, if, if a man is doing all these healings, all this amazing stuff, and it was spread all over Syria, that maybe, just maybe, someone would have written about it. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land uh, until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining. The Gospels present eyewitness accounts of the life and ministry of Jesus. He's asked, uh, why do you believe the Bible? said, I choose to believe the Bible because it's a reliable collection of historical documents written by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses. They report supernatural events that took place in fulfillment of specific prophecies and claim that their writings are divine rather than human in origin. Now, I know people who've memorized this. Now, what's the problem with that? The problem with that is not true, what he said. Oxford Annotated Bible is a well-respected book by many Christians, and it says, neither the evangelists nor their first readers engaged in historical analysis. Bruce Metzger, Christian. The Gospel of John's authorship is doubted. This is Christian scholar Raymond Brown in the introduction to New Testament, page 368 to 369. He explains, as with the other Gospels, it is doubted by most, 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 most scholars that this Gospel was written by an eyewitness of the public ministry of Jesus. If the Gospels were written late in history, over here somewhere, then you cannot trust them as eyewitness accounts. They weren't there. The eyewitnesses have been dead. By the way, if you want to lie about Jesus, let me tell you how you do it. You wait till everyone who knew Jesus is dead. Then you can say anything you want about Jesus. Who's going to know? Scholars generally agree that the Gospels were written at a time when most people were dead. Luke was a companion of Paul who carefully recorded some of the history of Jesus. But if you look at Luke chapter 1, it doesn't say that he interviewed any eyewitnesses. Hence, we once more have an anonymous author who was distance, distanced from the various traditions and stories that he later compiled as a non-eyewitness. The reason is simple. The connecting of the anonymous Gospel of Mark with John Mark of Jerusalem is a second century guess. Differences in the Gospel accounts lend credibility to the reliability of the Gospels. How many time have you, times have you heard this? You know how there's differences in, let's say, the birth narrative or the tomb narrative in different Gospels? Because if you've ever worked with witnesses, you know one rule of witnesses. They never, ever agree. Ever. It could happen five minutes ago. Never, ever agree, except for the times when these supposed witnesses... Um, quote each other word for word. Whoever wrote Luke had the book of Mark open and copied word for word. So here is the tomb narrative according to Mark 16. And by the time you get to John, that same tomb narrative explodes to that. It goes from this to that. I, I am very curious to see how they would answer this. When apologists and pastors say that I'll just look at all the manuscript evidence and nothing else even comes close in history, that says nothing about its veracity, whether or not it's true. Now, let me just be very clear about this. That doesn't prove that the text is true. This doesn't prove that the text is historically accurate. It's just to say that we know what 99% of the original wording of these documents was. Keep in mind, we don't have the original documents. So <laughs> I think uh, William Lane Craig is using the word no very loosely here. Oh, you see, that's not the same as saying that it's established 
with historical accuracy, sometimes Christians make this mistake. I think it's over 90% of all the manuscripts that we have for the New Testament are a thousand years after the purported event, a thousand years. Every time you hear the word manuscript from this day forwards, and if you've never heard this before, it's, this is going to stick in your head a thousand years later. Daniel Wallace acknowledges it should be pointed out that most of our manuscripts come from the second millennium, millennium, not century, millennium, A.D., and most of our manuscripts do not include the New Testament. If one excludes later medieval manuscripts, Wallace notes that only approximately 124 manuscripts come within the two, second to fourth centuries CE. The Bible provides a consistent message from Genesis to Revelation. In Isaiah, it's very clear that Yahweh is saying that um, before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I am the Lord, and besides me there's no Savior. Number nine, there are errors and mistakes in the Bible other than spelling and grammar. Now this is, a, I don't, I think Christians are going to be all over the map on this one. So if Jesus is starting here and his destination is Decapolis, ten cities in this area over here, would he go up to Sidon? Like did he have to pick up some dry cleaning and then come down? <laughs> so in Mark he's saying, no, no, my disciples don't fast. And then in Matthew, he's saying, when, when speaking to the disciples, saying, when you fast. And this is like right next to like when you pray, when you do other things. This is not like after I'm gone. When was Jesus born? Uh, was it 6 CE at the time of the, the census? Or was it uh, 4 BC, the time of Herod the Great, just before he died? Um, most scholars think that the author of this gospel made a mistake. Oh, yes, this is a, a good one that I, uh, most scholars say this is just a flat-out error. Uh, most scholars don't accept the historicity of the guard story. This is the million-dollar question. Our very first records of Jesus are from the authentic letters of Paul. By the way, if you, didn't, if you weren't aware, um, most scholars say that six of the 13 letters of Paul are forgeries. Whoever wrote the Gospel of Luke was quite familiar with the Old Testament and was familiar with this psalm and used this line, into your hands I commit my spirit. And the challenge is, besides Paul, can you name one person who states their name and where they're from? Because remember, they didn't have last names back then. And so usually they say, hi, I'm Doug from, and they'd state where they're from. Uh, so can you name uh, one person who identifies themselves, their name, where they're from, that wrote in their own words that they saw a Bali-risen Jesus?